Hey everybody, it's Allison Heikila. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm going to play with my gel press. I have a technique that I've been wanting to try for a while and it's new to me and I hope that it inspires you to give it a try as well. I first learned about this technique from Tiffany Solorio. She's awesome. She's got a great YouTube channel. She works with making monoprints a lot, but she also works with alcohol inks a lot. And now she's combining the two and she's got some really cool ideas. I will be sure to link her below in the description box. So what I'm going to do today kind of comes from her and you know maybe things will work out a little differently from what she did, but we'll see. So here's what we've got. I've got my 8x10 gel press plate and you will notice that it is extremely discolored. That's because I've used alcohol ink on there. It does not affect the way the press works. It works exactly the same. It's just stained and that's okay. I also have um, my plate on two large pieces of acrylic. You can see that there's a split there because they're actually two pieces. I don't have um, one that's big enough to hold the entire eight by 10, so I just put those two together. And the reason I do that is so that I have the ability to move the plate easily. Also, I've got a piece of white paper here just because my glass mat is black and I figured it would be a little bit easier for you to see what I was doing if I had the white paper underneath. Also, because this is very stained, um, it makes it a little trickier to see. In addition, I've got my little 3x5 gel press, also stained, <laughs> on a smaller piece of acrylic. You can, um, it's basically a stamp block, and it's an acrylic block, it's like one of these, except skinnier. So you use it for stamping, but I like to use it for my plates because now I have the ability to move this guy wherever I need to, when I need to. Especially if I need to like line something up, if I'm doing multiple layers on the same print, it's really helpful to have some type of acrylic holding your plate so that you can move it around. Okay, let's move on to the colors. I've got several alcohol ink colors here. We've got Raisin, Dijon, Laguna, Vineyard, and Espresso. These are similar to what um, Tiffany sometimes uses in her prints. I was really inspired by the Laguna and Dijon that she used, um, so I'm kind of making a variation of her her one of her favorite color palettes but obviously you can work with whatever colors you want this is just what I'm gonna be working with today and you can see that I make my own little swatches this is on poster board paper I get this at Dollar Tree um, the the sheets are really quite large and you get I think five in a pack and then I just cut them down I make my swatches I label the back and then I make prints on here too not necessarily with the gel press plate but whenever I'm working with alcohol ink, I tend to use this paper. We're not using that today, however. I'm gonna be using regular cardstock. Um, I've got Accent Opaque, I believe it's 100 pounds. This is just regular cardstock. Normally when I'm pulling prints, I just use copy paper, but because this is gonna be a very wet medium, um, I thought it would be better to use cardstock. If I find it's not working, we'll switch gears. So, here's where the magic happens. So. Tiffany mentioned in her video to start off with a layer of hand sanitizer and that helps the alcohol ink to move a bit more on the plate. So we're going to work with that. This is 62% alcohol. If you've got more, try more. If you got less, try less. This is all about experimentation. This is just what I have in the house. And then to pick up the print, we're going to use alcohol lift ink. Now I tend to use a matte medium when I pick up prints that have um, been made with alcohol ink. I also sometimes use like a heavy body acrylic paint. You could do what you want. If you want it to be translucent, like the alcohol inks are, I recommend trying a matte medium or what we're gonna do today, like I said, is we're gonna use the alcohol lift ink. If you don't need it to be translucent or transparent, then give it a go with the paint. You're gonna get totally different effects. None of them are wrong. None is better than the other. They're just different. So let's play. I'm going to open my lift ink, although we're not using that just yet. I've also got two brayers, just to see which one I feel like working with. And then, I've got a bunch of stencils here. These are all from Colorful Life Designs. Um, I have crumpled checks. These are all 6x9 because I figure I can just place two of them onto the plate at once. And we'll be good to go, right? So that's crumpled checks. I have, what is this one called? This is Flame Chevron. 
This is Bold Diamonds, Black Ice, this is called Driven Snow, and this is Cosmos. In addition to that, I also have my standard bubble wrap. I always have a piece of bubble wrap when I'm working on my gel press plate, and then I have a piece of corrugated cardboard as well. And then if we need anything extra, I have these two printing plates from Carabelle Studios. This one is called Postcard. And then this one is called Vitrail Number no. 2. Love these. Okay. And they're just like, it's a rubber stamp, right? It's a white rubber, and you just use them on your plate. Okay. Let's get started with this. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to add some hand sanitizer to our plate. So we're going to just brayer this out. I'm going to use my big six inch brayer here just because it covers the area quicker than my little guy. And the reason I have my small plate is because if I need to work on something else, if I have like excess, like right now I have excess hand sanitizer on here, I can just use this plate and make some little prints off to the side, especially while I'm waiting for things to dry. Okay, so that's on there. And now we're gonna start working with our color. So I'm gonna just start playing. And you can see how this is spreading out. Now if you've worked with alcohol ink on your plate before, it tends to not really spread like this, it just kinda of sits there. Um, again, there's no wrong way to do this stuff, it's just what kind of effect you want. So we're gonna just add these colors all over. I'm gonna save the espresso for some um, like additional things, like if I decide to stencil through a little bit or whatever, we'll do that. So now I'm going to just brayer this a little bit, mixing a bit but not overdoing it. And again, I know it's a little tricky to see the colors because um, mine is so stained, but that's what happens when you work with alcohol ink on your brayer, uh, on your gel press. Okay, so now this is on here, but that's okay. We can clean that up with isopropyl alcohol, which I also have off to the side. So now I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take the Cosmo stencil, and then I'm gonna take the Bold Diamond stencil. I'm gonna overlap that border just so that I have less of it. And now I'm going to pull a print with what's here. And this is not going to be like a, an award-winning print by any stretch. This is just to get some of that excess color up. And I haven't done this before, so we're going to see how this works out. Ooh, I like these colors together. Okay, let's see what we got here. All right, look at that. That is the beginning of something very cool already. So we could just leave this as is and then make some card fronts or whatever, die cut them, but that that's really pretty. I like it. Okay, we're gonna pull these up. And don't worry about the ink that's on your stencils. You can clean that off with some isopropyl alcohol. You can even spray this with isopropyl and then lay it on another piece of cardstock. Maybe we'll do that in a bit. We'll see. Okay, so now we've got all of this leftover design on here, but we're gonna add some more. So I'm going to take my bubble wrap. I'm going to cut this down a little bit. I've got this extra little piece here. I'm going to work on that. And I'm going to grab the espresso. And just kind of drop some of it on here. And then we'll roll it out. Just like that. And then I'm going to just kind of tap it here and there and just add a little bit of interest. Okay, so now I'm kind of curious what this looks like the way it is. It's not, you know, super layered or anything, but I don't know. I, I kind of want to see what happens. Should we do a little bit more of the bubble wrap? Let's do a little bit more of the bubble wrap. I try not to overthink when I'm doing stuff like this. I like to just let things flow. Um, I kind of feel like I want to leave it. We can get into heavier layers later. So now I'm going to take my lift ink 
and I'm going to just apply a bit of it at the top. This is from Ranger and Tim Holtz. A little bit more here. And this is what we're going to use to lift up the print. So now what I should have done first is make sure that this is all dry. So let's do that first. Let's let's dry off a little bit more of this. I think it's pretty good because again, we didn't add a lot of layers and it's been sitting here for a bit. I just take a block. If I don't have this on this little guy, I use this, but since I've got that on there, we're going to just kind of go back and forth. Make sure it's dry. Yeah, that's good. Okay. I'm going to take the original brayer I had and just kind of roll this out. We don't want to over brayer because then we'll wind up picking up our print and putting it on the brayer and that's not where we want it. Okay. So that's going to go there. I'm going to grab another piece of cardstock. Lay this down <clears throat> and give a good press. I'm excited to see how this works out. Oh man, look at that. Look at these colors, you guys. <gasps> oh, that's cool. That's really fun. Wow. I feel like I need some green. The Laguna is turning super turquoise. I feel like I need some green in this color palette. Let me grab a green. This came out really great. It lifted so nicely. You can really see the definition of the different stencil bits. I love that. Okay, so I grabbed some Everglades ink and we're going to use that one also because I feel like it needs some green. Also, let's do this first. I'm going to move this guy with the paper and I'm going to spray this and we're going to try to get a nice print from this without even putting it on the plate again. I'm just going to grab my isopropyl alcohol and some paper. Uh, I guess I'll spray it here. <clears throat> Usually I spray it away from my desk, but since I need you guys to see what I'm doing, I'm just going to spray this really well. You can see the color is breaking up. Now I just have some copy paper because this may or may not turn out good. So we'll see what happens. Ooh. That's fun. And if you feel like you need some more, you can just spray it a little bit more and then you get more of a transfer. That's a nice start. Do some doodles in there. Add little critters if you have them small enough. That's fun. All right, cool. So that's a great way to clean off your stencil. There's obviously some more ink on here. We can transfer again, but that's not what this tutorial is about. This is about playing with the lift ink and the uh, the hand sanitizer and, and seeing what we get from there. Okay, so now we're going to add some more hand sanitizer. And I still have my little plate off to the side with some alcohol ink on it and we'll pull a print from that a little later. I don't think that there's enough on it just yet. Okay, this has way too much sanitizer on it, so I'm going to clean that off. I'm just using a paper towel just to kind of get some of that excess off. I'll leave it off to the side. Okay, so now I'm going to start with the Everglades because we didn't get to use that before. I'm going to go in with the Laguna. And then we're going to use the Vineyard. And now I'm going to brayer some of this out. And I'm sticking with the cool colors at the moment. Just blending a little bit. And then I'm going to take my little plate and add some of that color to that. And then I've got a, a spare piece of paper here that I can just kind of roll off the excess with as well. Okay, so now let's take the flame chevron and then we're going to take the crumpled checks 
I'm going to use the piece of paper that, no, you know what? I'm not because that's already got ink on part of it. And they get a new piece of paper. So this part is just copy paper. Um, the first time I used the cardstock, the Axon Opaque cardstock, but this time I'm just using copy paper um, because this isn't like the main print that we're really focusing on. I can add layers to this later on, but the main print that we're, we're going to be playing with, maybe I'll use some of the uh, texture plates that'll put with the heavyweight cardstock. Oh, this is looking cool, you guys. Check that out. I love this. Oh, that's really cool. Okay, this is working out really well. Now we're gonna lift off both of these stencils. And again, we can spray this with isopropyl and put that on top of what we did before. Okay, now we need more stuff. Let's grab, I kind of want to use this one. We're going to use postcard a little bit. All right, let's pull this out. I'm going to, I'm thinking that I want to add a little bit of the hand sanitizer to this. Let's see what that does. I'm going to put a little bit on here. Maybe. Okay. And now I'm going to take that brayer that we've been using for this. I'm running out of camera space for you guys. I'm just going to kind of blend that out on here and see if that helps the alcohol inks on here. I don't know. We're just playing, you guys. We're just playing. So now I'm going to take raisin and kind of get that on here. Yeah, I don't like what that's doing. It's just soaking in. All right, but we're gonna mess with it anyway. We're gonna just press it down in here and see what happens. Yeah, I probably don't like that, but that's okay. If nothing else, we have some cool colors being added. Actually, in this case, it's warm colors. Let's see, let's do this. I'm gonna add a little bit of that here same color, spread it out, and this is going to wind up removing a lot of the checkerboard pattern that's there, but it's okay. Now we've got a moth here. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a moth there. And now I can kind of put it on this side. Mm, we'll see. Okay, I want to go in with some of the Dijon. I'm going to do the same thing that we did before and add this, spread this out. And just kind of place it here and there and see what we get. I've got my colors out of order. I'm trying to keep my colors in order at the top of my desk so that they go back on the correct caps. <laughs> do you do that too? I feel like it's important. I don't know, maybe I'm just being crazy. Let me add some of the bubble wrap to the little piece here, and we'll lift that up in a minute as well and see what we get with that. Okay. Now we're going to take our lift ink, and we're going to put a bead of it across the top, like so, and grab my larger brayer, start to coat it. See how I'm only going across the top and I'm rolling that brayer? That's so that I get the brayer coated before I go down the whole plate because I don't want to accidentally lift anything up until I've got the lift ink on the brayer. Okay, that looks okay. I think that's good. Now I'm going to grab my cardstock and we're going to put this on here like that. Rub this out. This is Dijon on my thumb, by the way. It's not a bruise. <laughs> that just happened. All right, let's see. A little more. Oh, look at that. Oh, there's the moth. There's a moth here. So remember, this was on this side, right? That moth was there. That's kind of cool. It's like ghosted. 
my bubble wrap got a little blurred up here got a little bit blurred but that's okay I think it's cool I think that this is because I rolled it too much with the lifting I probably overdid it I should just coat the brayer a little lighter um, and then start to roll it down but this is nice I see a lot of cool parts here that I can add to a card or whatever and then like an area like this that I don't love I can stencil on top if I want to take this guy right and just add some cool marks to it on top or just you know take this and stamp it properly then that would be great so these are all usable pieces even if you don't love everything as it is right now but those colors are great right okay let's lift the little guy and see what we get there I grabbed a piece of sheet music that I'm going to use. Again, I don't I don't know how this is going to come out. It might be terrible, and that's okay. But we'll see. If it's no good, we do something else on top of it. All right, it's a start. Again, we can just stencil on top of it, but the colors are really cool. That modeling effect. So we don't have anything d defined, but we didn't put any stencils on here or anything. So it's to be expected. You do have some cool bubble wrap happening. All right, let's move on. Maybe we'll do another piece with um, sheet music. Let me grab that. Okay, I grabbed a piece of sheet music. I'm gonna add some more hand sanitizer to our plate here. Bear it out. A little piece of something there. Okay. So what do you guys think of this? I'd love to know in the comments what you think of this whole process. We're going to start with raisin this time. And my other question is, do you enjoy watching process videos like this that don't necessarily have a finished project, but just kind of have me messing around playing for a while? I'd love to know what you think because I personally love doing stuff like this um and i could do this all day like i've realized that we're already 22 minutes into this and i don't want to stop <laughs> but i also don't know if you want to keep watching so i'd love to know what you think but be nice <laughs> i can take constructive criticism but i don't really care for mean comments as i'm sure you know that nobody really likes getting unkind comments okay all right we've got that now I'm gonna do driven snow and I'm making sure that this border is hanging off of the edge just so that we have less border to contend with and then I have black ice and now I'm gonna take another piece of copy paper pull this print I don't even need to use my matte medium because the lip ink is working so well. But it does work. If you don't have alcohol lip ink, um, definitely give it a shot with the matte medium. And depending on how you have it, like I have mine in a jar, um, I just use a spatula or a palette knife to just kind of apply it. Oh, you guys, this is so cool. <gasps> Look at how beautiful that is. Wow. That is really pretty. It's like glowing. This is not as exciting, but that's because it's just the negative and, you know, the, the bits are much smaller. Um, but this is definitely layerable. Okay. Pulling these off. You could see, at least I think that you could see how pretty this looks already. Like, it's almost like I don't even really want to add much to it. <laughs> okay. Um, I want to... I kind of want to leave it. It's so cool the way it is. Let's add a little bit more Dijon. I'm going to put a little bit right here. That's going to erase what we have there. So I'm not going to go crazy with it, but I want to use my cardboard. And just kind of get some stripe happening put a little bit maybe over here 
Can you see the stripes? Just, it's very subtle. I really don't think that I want to do too much to this because I'm very happy with it and I don't want to wreck it. I'm losing the stripes a little bit. There we go. We're going to leave it. I like it how it is. I'm going to just dry it off with my block. Don't worry, I won't make you watch this part. And then we'll pull the print with some sheet music. I'm really tempted to not even use the lift ink and to just grab my um, titanium buff paint because it really looks cool with um, alcohol inks. But for the sake of what we've been talking about, I'm not going to do it. I was careful to not overdo that top area so that I don't blur it. Okay, let's see. I've got some Dance Macabre sheet music here. Lay that on top. A little more. Ooh. That's cool. That looks really cool. Look at how pretty this is. Wow. I'm loving this. So we've got a couple of really cool prints here. Let's take a look. We've got this one. This one here. I love how the moth came out. It's just, it's ghosted, which is kind of what the lift ink is meant to do, but it's you use it in a completely different way from what it was originally intended here, which is okay because it's good to experiment, right? And then we've got this here. This is just on the copy paper, but it's totally beautiful and usable. This is another one on copy paper. Oh, I'm so crazy about this spot right here. This one, this was our first main pull. And then we've got that. The colors are awesome. And then this was pulling from the leftover ink that was on the stencil. I really want to do that with this one. Let's do that really quick before I say goodbye. <laughs> this is what happens. I'm telling you, like I get so into it and I don't want to stop. So I've got my isopropyl alcohol again. I'm going to spray this generously. You can see that color is breaking up because that's what it's supposed to do. And then we're going to lay this guy on top. Just like this. If you don't want ink on your fingers, you can put another piece of paper on top, but I don't really care. You can also wear gloves. If you don't want ink on you at all, wear some gloves. And make sure that you're working in a well-ventilated area if you're working with alcohol inks, um, because, you know, it's not the safest stuff to work with. Have the windows open, have a fan going, anything like that. Even the isopropyl can be pretty strong, so. Ta-da! How cool is that? That's fun. And then what you can do, if you want to, you can take the stencil and shift it after this is cleaned off really well and dry. Um, you can shift it, right, like this. Let me get it lined up. Yeah, that's fine. And then ink this up right? With like a complementary or coordinating color. And then you'll have a nice full panel. All right, guys, I think that's about it for me today. Like I said, I could keep going. <laughs> In fact, after I turn off the camera, I probably will keep going and then I'll have plenty of fun prints to share with you. So thanks so much for hanging out with me. I hope that you learned a few things and I hope that you give this a try. Let me know what you think in the comments. I will see you guys very, very soon. Be well, stay safe. Peace out.